In today's video, we take a look at Antarctica, the second hardest biome in evolution life, due to a combination of extreme overworld conditions as well as some of the toughest competition imaginable. Practically everything on this ice continent is larger than their counterparts in other biomes, mainly due to the phenomenon known as polar gigantism. The winter overworld event is also brutal, not only because of the darkness but also due to the freezing temperatures, which sometimes drops to as low as around minus 80 degrees Celsius. All this leads to the majority of the player base opting to not spend most of their time Time on land, which is why the largest permanent resident in Antarctica is a tiny 4mm insect. However, not all builds here are created equal, so let's just analyze all the players we come across. As you can see, I have encountered some penguins on the ice. Despite being quite a popular choice for this biome, these builds don't have a very high mobility stat compared to the other players in the region, and while they are decent at catching fish, there are more suitable builds for this playstyle. Despite the fact that their feathers work okay for providing some degree of protection against the cold, it isn't very useful at blocking attacks, so their defense stat isn't too high either. While penguins spent some XP on stealth in terms of feather color, this isn't very effective on land, where they often have to huddle together to protect themselves from birds such as squirrels. Because of the fact that the penguin only has mediocre stats at best, I think that they are our tier builds that really shouldn't be played in the Antarctic server. If you really want to try this build out though, find a region where penguins are playable that has less intense competition, and maybe you won't get bullied by all the other builds. After staying with the penguins hoping that more viable builds will be attracted, I have located a level seal player. These builds are highly aggressive and have a good damage stat. Their large and sharp teeth deal nice bite damage and their mobility stat isn't too shabby. This, despite not quite reaching whale and shark capabilities, is still enough for it to catch penguins, which are decent sources of XP for leopard seals. Because of their good base stats, these players are mostly unchallenged in the Antarctic biome. However, it looks like today, there is another type of seal around these parts, the elephant seal. With a fully leveled up male player reaching an astonishing weight of over 8,000 pounds, the elephant seal weighs four times as much as a full-grown male polar bear, making it the largest playable build in the carnivore faction. Elephant seals also have enough defense, life and power to kill leopard seals on occasions, but this doesn't happen often as both builds are just as viable as each other, with the elephant seals spending more XP on life in the leopard seal and damage into mobility. During breeding season, males often become just as aggressive as their leopard seal counterparts, with violent and bloody battles not uncommon. They also use their large trunk-like nose to create exceptionally loud roars in the hopes of scaring off any rivals before a violent confrontation arises. The large amount of life that the elephant seal has makes it very difficult for most builds to score a kill. Yet there are still some players that are able to accomplish this. We will take a look at them later. I believe we have just about analyzed all the notable partially terrestrial builds in Antarctica by now, so let's dive beneath the waves. I can see that we have encountered our first aquatic Antarctic build, the sperm whale. Sperm whales are some of the most powerful playable cetaceans in the game. They can dive up to more than 3,000 feet in search of giant squid, one of their favorite XP sources. Battles between these two builds are often fierce, yet one-sided as the sperm whale wins almost all of the time. The sperm whale's massive head gives it great ramming capability, and this cetacean has always been feared by whale hunting humans due to the fact that the sperm whale's huge head can obliterate their ships. The sperm whale also has great sensory capability, using echolocation, one of the most overpowered abilities in the game to find food. This is how sperm whales are able to easily navigate their surroundings even in the abyssal biome, and what helps it find food. A crucial aspect of gameplay is sperm whales need to eat around 900 kilograms of food a day to sustain its massive size. For other base stats, sperm whales are pretty average in terms of cetacean standards. They have the largest brain in terms of pure mass in the game game, and while their intelligence isn't low, it's not exactly extraordinary either. Not much else I have to say about this build, so let's move on. Right here is a blue whale player. Builds such as the blue whale frequently visit the Antarctic to feed on the large amounts of krill, which are seriously some of the least viable builds in the game. However, this video isn't about them, so back to the blue whale, the largest animal build in the game. Thanks to their sheer amount of life, 
Blue whales are some of the most unstoppable builds ever, so let's just be glad they don't go around eating schools of sharks in one gulp, otherwise they would need to be banned or nerfed. I suppose unless you count krilla sharks, which are griefed in staggering numbers all the time by builds such as the blue whale. That being said, there is still one type of non-human build powerful enough to take down the blue whale, but we will use that impossibly overpowered build to wrap up this video. After diving deeper into the abyss, I have located a colossal squid, the largest invertebrate build in the game, with a huge eye around 8 centimeters in diameter. I have a whole entire video about this real life kraken, so check that video out, but if you don't feel like it, here's a brief recap. The colossal squid has impressive life as well as decent damage and mobility, and they are armed with rotating hooks and a powerful beak shape like that of a parrot's. However, despite all this, sperm whales still usually win whenever a confrontation arises. Like I said, despite the not as good quality, please check out that video if you are interested in the giant squid. Anyways, there isn't too much else to see down here. So let's return to the surface. What I'm currently looking at is the impossibly OP build I was talking about, the Orca. Also known as the Killer Whale, Orcas are some of the most successful builds in the game. Their high mobility, damage and especially intelligence allow them to figure out ways to absolutely decimate all other ocean builds, with game footage showing them swimming in formation extremely quickly and knocking seals off of ice flows into the water to be eliminated. They have also been observed leaping out of the water and snatching seabirds. While normally this isn't a top tier strategy as attacks from aerial builds above and aquatic builds below are a real threat, Orcas are way too tanky and powerful to be threatened by any other non-human player in the ocean, and there will probably never be an aerial build large enough to fly yet still be able to lift an Orca out of the water, so killer whales are free to grief everyone else in the ocean. They also live in pods to protect the new players, which may be vulnerable to attacks from sharks and other predatory builds. Orcas are also smart enough to know that attacking humans will never end well, which is why unlike sharks, Orcas have never killed a human in the wild before. All this makes the Orca a formidable build that is almost immune to predation from the beginning of their playthrough, and secures their spot as the top tier of Antarctica and the ocean in general. So that's the tier list. If you enjoyed this style of video please leave a comment down below. Hit the like button with the penguin and subscribe to my channel. Share this video with all your Orca friends on social media. Thanks for watching and just to let you know Orcas have attacked and killed people in captivity in the past.